Welcome to the channel. In this video, I'm going to be doing a review of the VoxLab Ares 3D printer. Um, like it says here, it's designed more for schools or for beginners. It's a super simple setup for this machine. It comes pre-assembled. You just pull it out of the box. You got to remove some packaging and things like that. Uh, plug it in. It'll ask you a couple of questions, you know, to get the bed set up. And uh, that's pretty much it. Um, and then you're printing. Uh, it's, it's really uh, kind of great. Uh, I was pleasantly surprised by this machine, uh, especially how easy it was to go from, you know, zero to, to actually printing uh, in a couple of minutes, you know, probably 10, 15 minutes tops. But we'll save all that for the actual review. If you like this type of content, please like and subscribe. Uh, Especially if you like the video itself, hit that like button because it really helps me out, you know, the way YouTube presents these to people. But let's go ahead and get started with the actual review. This is the overall look of the printer. I mean, it has a nice, nice aesthetic to it. Uh, it's a cube style printer. It is a bed dropper. So, you know, your Z axis uh, moves the bed up and down. Really stable. Um, it's just like a Flash Forge Adventurer 3. So those are red, whereas this one is black. Other than that, they're the same printer. Okay, so here's a closer look at the bed. It has these little twist knobs here that you can pull the bed off. There's two of them. There's one on this side and one over on the other side. Makes it easy to remove the glass plate. You can also see that this has two linear rods that the bed rides on and here's a single lead screw these are your adjustment knobs there's only two of them there's in the front um, I guess they figure that since the back is stationary this will allow you to do fine tuning uh, works out really easy not a lot of adjustment you need it's pretty stable and all in all it seems like a good motion system here for the bed um, seems again pretty stable uh, haven't had any problems in any of the prints that I've done on it So this is a view of the hot end from underneath. Your x-axis, as you can see here, is made up of two linear rods. Here's your cooling fan. The hot end itself, uh, there's nothing special about it. Um, it's, you know, a standard hot end that you're going to find in basically any printer that's out there. Um, you know, every Ender's got one, I guess you could say. I haven't had any problems with the hot end, especially printing at the uh, speed that this thing prints at. So it works, you know, fine, um, but there's nothing special about it. Okay, this is a view of your hot end from the top. This is a Bowden style printer. So the extruder is actually on the back of the printer. It has this single ribbon that controls pretty much everything. There's, you know, uh, your cooling fan it's over here on this side. This is your hot end fan. Get this out of the way and you can have a better look at the y-axis which is this linear rod here there's another one on the other side you have these two bearings that uh, hold the carriage this is your x motor now i will say that this printer is is very stable um, it seems very well built all right here's a look at the back of the printer you can see the extruder right here. This is where the uh, filament goes in, right there. And then there is the uh, arm to release tension. And the one thing to note is this is all plastic. So I don't know what the longevity is there. The other thing to note is that when this is printing, this whole back acts as like a speaker. So you can really hear the extruder. This is the uh, filament holder. It just slides into this little slot here. It's kind of inconvenient that this thing is on the back. Um, I really don't like that at all. You know, maybe in a different setup it, it might be nicer, but changing filament is kind of a pain on this printer, uh, or at least it is in my opinion. Okay, so here's a look at the actual firmware for this printer. It's completely custom. 
And what's interesting is there's actually an eight gigabyte disc that's internal to this system, which I think is kind of interesting. Now, anything you print on here is going to get copied to that eight gigabyte uh, disc that's on it. From here, you can do lots of different things. You can copy it if you want. I don't know why you'd want to copy one of the models, but you can. But since everything gets copied here, you're going to have to come in here periodically and delete these models. And you can do a multi-delete by holding onto one and then selecting the ones you want to remove. So that they make it really easy, but you're going to have to do that periodically. Here's the USB drive that I have inserted. Again, it's pretty nice firmware. You have lots of indicators here on the top. This will show you there's a USB. Here's a network. Then we can do our hot end and our bed temperatures uh, at the top. Under control, we have all the things that you're normally going to see. We can preheat our nozzle or our bed to whatever we want. We can move our axis, you know, in whichever direction we want. You know, again, all of your standard you know, things you come to expect on a modern printer. They make it really easy um, to do all that here. I, again, I think it's it's really nice firmware. It's, it's really laid out very well. Um, <coughs> now you can home, you know, single touch. Again, makes it really easy. And I think they did that, you know, because this is designed for a classroom setting, I do believe. Here you have your load and unload filaments. Uh, again, makes it really easy to set this machine up. And then you have your leveling to get your uh, Z offset. This doesn't have any type of uh, automated leveling on it. Now again, here you have different things that you can turn on and off, like uh, with the buzzer, you can turn on and off. There's a little LED light underneath the hot end that you can turn on and off. Uh, it's all kind of really nice stuff. And here is uh, machine information. You can see the IP address, the WAN MAC address how long it's been in use, uh, the firmware version. This is running the latest version that they have out. Okay, so before we get into any test prints, let's look at the actual slicer that comes with this thing. It's proprietary. You have to use their slicer in order to get full functionality out of the system. Um, you know, Wi-Fi transfer and all of that will not work using a regular uh, slicer. This looks like it's an older version of Cura that they forked off. And here you can see, you can change your view. You know, this is just like how Cura used to do things. Um, I mean, it works. Uh, don't get me wrong, there's, there's nothing wrong with this slicer. It's just older and does not have all of the features that modern day slicers do. Um, here you can, you know, move the model in any way you want. Really have to double click on these icons to you see all of the features that they have. You know, this will allow you to move it uh, wherever you need to move it. Say you want to rotate, um, this will allow you to do that. You know, again, it, it is actually kind of nice that you can specify the numbers here. And if you need to scale it, you know, again, this will allow you to scale it. You can do them um, uniformly or you can break it out into each individual axis. It's all very nice, all very standard, you know, kind of what you would really expect. Now this will allow you to slice the model, which again is very nice. Sometimes you need to do that. You know, if a model is too big, uh, you can cut it into two. <coughs> again, all standard things. Now, what makes this one really easy is that they've gone through and they've set up uh, the profile for this. So, you know, all of the settings uh, for this printer are basically already done for you. So you can expect to get a really nice print out of all of the various options that they have. And the majority of things that you're going to want to do are covered in here. The only thing that, you know, makes it kind of difficult is that the printer is slow. You know, I mean, that's really what it boils down to. It is just slow. But I mean, you can see that you, you have options um, for supports, you have options for rafts, 
basically anything that you might want to do in, in a regular slicer you can pretty much do in here um, there just aren't as many ways to find tweak stuff so now what is nice about this though is that it's fully connected so this slicer and the printer are tied together and I can see what the printer is doing in this little blue box it tells me the current status of that printer and then when I send to printer I can send my model straight from here over to the printer and the printer will start printing it uh, you know and that's really nice okay so this is the actual print of the spatula that you saw in the slicer itself and like I said I, I just hit send to printer and it will start printing it which again is really nice uh, you know you don't have to have an extra you know host or something to run octoprint on or anything like that in order for this thing to work via the network okay so let's see how this thing turned out now again things stick to this bed very well very very well and I mean as you can see it's it is a nice print um, the printer itself does really good a little bit of stringing here just something that stuck to it but I've got zero complaints out of the quality that I've seen so far out of this printer you know again the biggest thing is it's just slow okay so this is one of the test prints that they have on the uh, USB stick that they give you when you buy this printer it's a uh, little hook so let's see how it turns out and again I mean it's it looks really good from here you can see there's some little wisps that are still attached to it let's pull those off I mean again it's a nice functional print the white has a tendency not to show up very well I mean it's a great looking print can't really complain about that nice and solid okay so here's another print that they have on the SD card it shows different shapes or I guess how the printer can do different shapes Let's see how it turns out okay let's see what we got here this is an interesting little model as you can see I guess these are the various shapes that they can do uh, it turned out really clean the semicircle doesn't really look there's some stringing underneath it I guess that was for bridges or something I don't know but you can see the stringing under there other than that I would say everything looks really really clean good okay so this is the last pre-sliced model that they have which is a gear set let's see what we get okay let's see how our little spatula does pretty good now here's our gear set it's got a raft let's get that raft off the raft did a pretty good job it does it spin It looks really really clean 
If anything, though, it's a little loose. Huh. Really nice print and place gear set. It does seem a little loose. But I mean, I'm, I haven't tuned this filament at all. I basically just printed it out. So you could adjust that a little bit by your flow rate. Cool. Okay, so now we're back in the slicer. I wanted to test something else to see how well this thing handles supports. So let's load up a model of a little dinosaur. And then we will shrink this guy down to a more manageable size. As you can see, he's way bigger than the volume of our printer here. Now you just grab them and you push them and then you can resize them to whatever you want, which is kind of nice and easy. Let's go about there. Now, one of the good things about this is that this slicer um, does support trees or does tree supports. However you want to say that. Let's see what we get. Now, obviously this is older code. Um, you know, Cura has been doing tree supports for a while now, but these are kind of funky looking tree supports. So let's see how these actually work out in a real life setting. So let's print it and then send it. All right, and this is the actual print of our little dyna. So let's see how those supports turn out. Okay, let's see what we got here. Well, they look pretty good. And the overall quality of the print itself is super smooth. That's yeah, really, really nice. A little bit of stringing here and there, but again, it's probably just the filament I'm using because I haven't, you know, tuned that at all. That broke away pretty easy. Uh, these bottom, there's a little bit under his chin. All right, let's see if we can get the rest of this off. This, These bottom supports, they're really on here. Let's see if I can get this off. Yeah, they're really attached. Again, it's probably because you're over extruding the filament a little bit. Break out the tweezers, clippers. Let's see. All right, let me try this. Okay, now that we've got them all cleaned up, got all those supports off, you can see that they were really anchored in there. And you know, that could be the filament, um, need to adjust the flow. You know, again, I just popped it in there and hit print, didn't really change anything. So that's a possibility. But all in all, you know, if you look at the top side of them, it's super, super smooth. Uh, it looks fantastic. A little bit under his chin, you know, where that other support was. Uh, it didn't seem to really be grabbing on too well. But I would say that all in all, this is a definite win. Okay, final thoughts. I really like this printer. Um, I'm actually kind of surprised how much I like this printer. One of the downsides that I mentioned this before is that when it is printing, um, the printer itself is not very loud. 
Um, but the extruder, you know, where it's positioned, it, it makes it sound like an amplifier. So you can really hear that extruder, uh, especially on retractions. It seems to print great, so that's a definite thumbs up. But another negative for this thing is that it's all proprietary. You have to use their slicer in order to get full functionality. You have to use their firmware because you know it's all again proprietary, proprietary board. It's a really weird setup that they got going here. So you're at you know Vox Labs mercy to give you new and updated firmware, which I'm never going to be a fan of because there's so much innovation that comes out of the open source community. But if you look at you know who it's targeted for, it's targeted for schools and things like that where you want it turnkey and easy. They've definitely accomplished that. So I would definitely give it a thumbs up. Anyway, if you like this kind of content, like and subscribe. And as always, happy printing.